Hello, everybody. Today is a Sunday and the market's closed. I'd like to show you today what I consider to be the best one minute setup that there is, best layout that you can have for Thinkorswim. I've been using it for a while. Uh, I also have a video that shows the best five minute layout if you don't want to do a one minute layout that's, that's similar to this, but has, has some subtle differences. So uh, I, let me just tell you a little bit about what we have here, and then I'll go into details about how to use them. So this is a one minute chart here. This is the seller's indicator here. This is the enhanced volume indicator. This is the MACD down here that I can pop up as a daily chart. This is a four hour chart that I pop up if I need to. This is a 15 minute chart, a one hour chart. This is your level two. This is your active trader. It's the ladder's hidden here because I don't use it for one minute trading. Um, sometimes if the stock's really uh, bunching up, I might open that up just to get a better look at it. Then over here, I have the five minute chart and then I have the RSI and then I have the DTS, uh, well, I'm sorry, the ADX um, trend lines here. And then down here at the bottom, I have my news that I pull up if there's news, but uh, I have it going on on demand right now. So they don't, they don't use news. That's why it's moving because it's a Sunday. So uh, uh, you can get all of this just by going right down where it says show more and highlight the URL. My uh, advice is if you want to move over the entire layout, that first you do the individual URLs and get all these custom scripts. These are cuts custom strips, scripts that I've modified, and I'm going to go into detail about a little bit more about them. But if you wanted to just kind of go seamlessly into your layout on your thinkorswim do the custom scripts first anything that says dts that's day trading for success that's a custom script and you'll see those uh next to the urls so load those first then do the whole um layout and it'll come up just like this if you if you like it and of course you can use the custom grid here and you can you can x out things you don't like if you you know if you want to move the whole thing over so guys before i go into more detail i just wanted to get out there if you like what you see please remember to give me a thumbs up and a subscribe it really helps my channel um all right so i'm going to go right into it so on my one minute chart i have the grid set up in here a lot of people don't like the grid but the grid really is for a specific purpose so um this is showing me five one minute candles within this grid and it's so important that when the i know when this five minute candle is about to change a lot of people only trade on five minutes so it's really important that you know i mean you can be a clock watcher too but this just helps me because i want to i want to be looking right at the screen i don't want to be looking around at my clocks and stuff the, the 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 tighter you can make what you're looking at obviously when you're doing fast in and outs the better so you're not just going like that i mean i have eight screens around me but i put everything i really need to see in the moment right here and then the others are up for mostly longer research that i can look around or i do a lot of zoom uh, and I have, you know, sometimes 50 people trading with me and it's great to see everybody up there and then there's a chat window open and stuff. So, but for actual trading, you know, you don't, you, you really want it all on one screen if you can, you know. So that's why I have the grid. Now, now you see a bunch of lines in here. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the beaker here, which might be under my picture. Um, but anyway, so this is what I have on that uh, moving averages. All right. I have the nine the 20, the 50, the 100, the 200, the VWAP, uh, the volume profile, which I'll talk about in a minute. Anything that says DTS, like I said, is the seller's indicator and the enhanced volume indicator. Uh, and then there's the MAC, yeah, there's the MACD, which is not mine. But um, so that's what's on the chart right now. And uh, this, this volume profile is very important. It's, you notice how it's not over on the right uh, it's inside, it's in for in, intraday trading, and I have a whole video about why that's over there, how come it's so important for uh, scalping um, and day trading so you can be in the mix and see where you are all the time without trying to kind of calc it over on the right. Um, and then you can actually change. I've kind of made it not so bright. Um, you can see right here it's not so, so bright um, because I... Um, I, it kind of it can overwhelm when you're right in the middle of it. So you can change the uh, change that to be not quite so bright when you go into the settings. But under this volume profile here, uh, watch the video, shows you how to use it, how to get it over here. So that's there too, and that's very helpful. Um, so that's sort of the one minute chart. And I do have a, 
uh, video about how to set up both the one and the five minute charts, just specifically typing in, doing everything, how I get them to be, how they look just like this. That's another video. Down here is the seller's indicator. This is very important. It's my main go-to. This is one of the custom scripts that I have modified for my team. And basically, it, it was a game changer. So when the red line goes up, that means the stock price is going down. And uh, um, when the red line's at the bottom and there's a lot of volume, that means the stock price is going up. Like if you were to look here, you could see there was a reverse. I mean, you know, you can look at the candles. You can make the candles look far more exciting if you do that, right? So if you look here, it's showing you how this stock it started from down here. It went straight up. And then the next one is going up. But anyway, this this sort of you it's it's amazing, but you kind of see it before the candles form. It's not really telling the future, but it's just it's another way to see stuff. And it's it's really uh, it brings you into the moment. And again, what you're trying to do with all these as I go over them is you're trying to get as many as you can to align before you make your decision, you know, and you have to be in the quicker you can do that, the quicker your layout is set up for you to make that assessment, the more successful you're going to be. Um, so, so this is really important. Um, also the enhanced volume indicator, very important before I, I, I scripted this in, I use this only and inside these candles, it shows the sentiment of uh, bids and ask or buys and sells within each candle. So you can kind of see the overall, um, stretch that out a little bit you can see the overall sentiment of what's going on and knowing that along with this the seller's indicator i just recently made a change to the script well this will scroll in time before i had to always move it so it makes it a lot it's a lot better now to use and so and then the other thing that's great about the enhanced volume is you have the last uh, um, volume of the last candle and then the existing one here and that just alone makes this worthwhile right in your face you can see hey has it gone up since the last one is this is this move stronger than the move before you know so really important um so uh, then down here is the macd this is not a script you might be familiar with it this is again another way to see how strong the move is up or down you know uh go, and it, right now this is telling you this is a strong move here it's telling you it's strong here it's telling you it's strong this would be a time to buy you look at the five minute it's making the move i mean it's still a downward trend it, it, no, trend there's a lot of um, you know uh, misconceptions about trends so in order for this to be an upward trend you can't just be like three candles and end up here green it's got to break the downtrend so it's got to break up then it becomes a, a, an upward trend that doesn't mean there's not a move as it goes up here i'm just you know that was one of the things that came up recently in discussions like what what makes a, a trend change um so then down here is my daily uh which i will you can just double click on any chart up at the blue line and so i will mark this out if i was about to trade amazon i would mark this out i would actually go to a weekly and i would mark out the trend lines just in case they're going to be come into play you know just in case they one of them is going to you know an ascending resistance or descending support is going to actually help me uh today i would double click again it goes back i would do that then here is my four hours it's the same thing i'm going to mark out four hours back a ways to just make sure there's that there's not a lot of alignment and then that's gonna and i will put right on the on the support and resistance line what is this this is a four hour five day and look how many times it taps so it could be very well respected so make sure you watch my video on support and resistance lines um because there's a whole i'll just drag it over here there's a whole thing i do on that that you know you do a lot of charts if you're about to trade a stock take 10 minutes mark out all your supports and resistances make sure you have all the information you can do it's really not going to crowd up your screen because you're going to be right in you know right in one little area here and those lines will be around but you'll totally be able to see what you're doing so the bet the more information the better i know there's other people who say oh you don't want to mess up your you know you know put so many things on your charts well you there it's not like they're really in your way i mean so why not have it that's just my pet peeve about that. Um, then this is the one day, uh, one day, 15 minute, and this is the five day, one hour. So now I'm looking at these more than opening up stuff because I'm, I'm trying to see immediately, is there a longer trend for the longer move? What's, what's it look like? I mean, like if you look at this one hour, this has been con consistently going down. So, you know, to, to be excited about a possible uptrend right here, that wouldn't be a smart move, right? 
So these are why these things are, are, are good to look at. Then up here is my level two. Now, um, a lot of people don't understand the level two and they just look at the prices. Now, remember, you have to add two zeros to any of these numbers. And the level two is pretty important uh, in any kind of a, a one minute or five minute trading. Um, because basically, you're looking at the bid and the ask numbers adding up here. Now, the ladder here adds them up for you. That's what it's doing, you know. And that's, that's really helpful for people. So you might want that up for that. Um, because otherwise, you've got to look at because there's a lot at the same price and you got to kind of add up in your head. But what I'm really looking for in the one minute in, in, in the moment is I'm looking for a big like three, four digit number somewhere on a price thing that's going to stop that stock for a while. Either it's, it's there's so much volume that it just rips through it and you, you know, get ready to be in that move the second it's ripping through it. Like, oh, my God, those are all going to sell. Which way is it going? Oh, I'm going to I'm going to shorter. I'm going to go along based on how fast that's churning. That's very exciting when you see a large number and you just see it going down. And sometimes it goes down before you can say one, two, three. And it was like, you know, 30,000 people at that one level. So, you know, that stock's going to pop. So I'm looking for big numbers like that. Otherwise, I'm looking at the price. Uh, if there's a lot of low volume, then um, sometimes just seeing you know three across could really slow a stock down or turn it around even. So you know you do want to have some some of this showing a little bit. Uh, I mean probably even a little more than that. Something like that if you're if you're newer in it. Um, and then this is my this is what I do use on the Active Trader. I kind of all these can be adjusted customized. I mean, I moved the average price to the top. I took out the daily position. I just, I want to read in the moment again, what's my average price? What's my position? You know, how many shares? What am I at for the day? What do I have open right now in that share? Right there, big green, hopefully green, not red, <laughs> big, big uh, numbers right here. Um, and then, you know, I have this set, you can set this um, for um, different uh, if you go up to um, your default numbers, if you open up settings, um, you can set your um, your defaults for all kinds of no, any number you want. You can type in any number you want. Right now, I have this at 500 for me. So this will go up in 500 increments is what I'm trying to say. Um, so, you know, then on the buttons, I definitely want um, cancel all, reverse, flatten. These are three important. Obviously, you want buy market. You want join the bid because you want to try to get a stock um if you if you're going long right let me just move, pan these over um if you're going long you want to try to join the bid on a dip right join the bid to get the best lowest possible price and then you want to get the best possible price going out so you join the ask which is always higher now apple doesn't have i mean i'm sorry amazon doesn't have much of a spread but if you were trading tesla that's a huge difference that you want to make sure because it could be 15 cents. And if you have a thousand shares, that's $150. So, you know, so but sometimes you just don't get picked up and you know you're always going to get picked up on the buy or sell. Or sometimes there's a partial pickup. People ask me what the flatten is just like buy or sell market. Uh, I spent a lot of time with tech, tech and think or swim. Uh, to ask the question about this button, the flatten. So buy market and sell market is basically the same thing. However, if you have a partial fill and you don't want to be typing in, you just want to get out of the position without going short suddenly, just hit flatten. But what, what, what flatten does, it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, until that everything's filled, it's going to keep going down this ladder until it's filled, which, which is similar to, to market, but not exactly. So it's kind of a... Uh, when people say that, it's not exactly the same. When you're going into real high share size, it can make a difference of hundreds of dollars had you just pushed buy or sell. That has happened to me, and that's why I've been on the phone about it with them. Um, anyway, so that's that. Then over here is time and sales. Uh, now, am I reading these individual numbers? Absolutely not. I am not. Um, but what I'm looking for is big clumps of red, big clumps of green, right as I'm about to get in. Like if I was about to go long and I saw all this red, and this is already what's happened, but it hadn't affected anything here yet. And I saw this big clump, I go, whoa, whoa, don't go long yet, hang on. Or if I'm about to go long and I see a big clump of green, I'm like, wow, you know, this is strong. So I use the time and sales to kind of help me again, make the decision. Everything helps, everything 
lined up as much as you can gives you more of an edge because that's all you're getting. There's no sure thing uh, to make a trade. So then here on the five minute, um, we'll go, I think, I'm not sure if I remember to show you how to get your tools on the charts here, but you definitely want to get your tools on the charts. Um, at least I think that. So if you maximize your, your cell here, you go into the beaker. Uh, no, it's not the beaker. I'm sorry. It's the gear wheel. And then down here under my tools, it has options. So you put them on your chart. I can't remember if I said that. So if I repeated myself, sorry. Um, and then they're up here for you to use to make your trend lines, your your support and resistance. Like if I was on that, I just double left click and I can create a line. I go into that line. I can edit that line, call it whatever I want, put any color I want, change the price if I want, extend it all the way to the left, make a different style, make it wider. So, you know, that's what you can do. But in this particular case, I'm going to do something. I'm going to show you about these dailies. So these daily indicators up here are for an entire day on a five-minute chart. These other indicators on my five-minute chart, which I'll open up in a second, are for five-minute increments. So uh, yearly, weekly, monthly, daily, all more respected than a five-minute are. There's, you know, that's further back. The further back it is, the more respected it's going to be. It's as simple as that. Assuming it's it's a, a correct number, like if it was a trend, it would have to be drawn correctly. But and I recommend you watch that video. I have that how to do that. But so right here, I would look really quick. Like, are any of these going to come into play today? And this one might. This ninety three seventy two that it might get down there. So on this line, I would edit it. I would call it the fifty day. So these are SMAs now. It's it's important that you make them SMAs when you're doing this far back, SMA uh, 50 day. Oops, I don't know how an N got in there, 50 um, day. And then I make it the same color as the line there. And then I make it solid and I even double it because it's pretty serious. And then I write in the, I put in the price 93.72. So oops, 93. Uh, and I say, okay. And there it is. Oh, I should have extended it. I like to extend it. So extend it to the left. So now if I came down to this line here, I would take it very seriously that it could bounce back. And if it blew through it, that I might, I might seriously add to shorting it, you know, um, because now it's, it's lost a huge level of support. Now, if you watch my um, video on support and resistance, you'll see that I have this all marked out um, for the, from two or three days back, open session highs, open session pivots, pre-market highs and lows, open session lows, um, trends, I mark it out. And when you're trading in the moment, it's not in your way. I think I mentioned that before. Um, so the other things that are on, so on this five minute chart, let's get a look at what else I have here um, into the beaker. It's basically the same things, 9, 20, 50, 100, 200, VWAP. And then uh, the volume profile is over here as well. DTS is anything. This one's got the, um, the dailies I was just talking about in the RSI. And then uh, down here, I'm about to go into telling you what the ADX is. So these are all things I have on my five-minute chart. Um, we'll double click here. And it closes that up. Now, um, let's go ahead and go down into, again, you're looking for alignment on the five minute. And then, you know, I'm going to have a video soon about chart patterns. I really, I'm only really looking for four or five specific chart patterns with bull flags and bear flags and topping tails and um, that really come into play in the short distance that I trade that may come into play. And then you're looking for alignment on, on those as well. So one more thing you have to think about, but the more you get into thinking about all these things, the better trader you're going to be. It takes time. Just start with just a couple of simple ones and go low share size. First of all, start in a sim, absolutely, and only trade with money that you can afford to lose. I think everybody that makes a video seems to say that and has disclaimers that come up. So I'm going to assume you're going to be a little bit careful, unlike I did when I started day trading. Luckily, I had some extra money to to lose and feel the pain with. But um, a lot of people, you know, they're trying to make a living and you don't want to lose thousands and thousands of dollars because you think you got it all figured out. And and that's how we, we think as a species, right? We think we got it. And uh, 
it, it, it's, it's a road. It's a journey. So I'm just going to put that out there. It took, it took me a while to really understand what I was doing before I got um, successful. And I still have massive red days because I, for, I don't forget, but I have trouble cutting my losses um, because I don't want to think that I'm wrong. And I just keep averaging up or averaging down like, oh, I know it's going to change. And I recommend not doing that. <laughs> so that's all I can say about that. Um, but now this is the RSI. So this indicator, the only um, reason, I mean, the main thing about how this indicator works is if this were to go above the 70, this gray line, it's telling you that it's overbought and it's going to come down. If it goes below the 30, that means it's oversold and it's going to come up. So you can kind of see that's what happened here. Bounce, bounce. Now, it's not always, like anything, it's not for sure. It's not always. But um, it will, it, you know, it's another thing you just glance at and say, where am I? You know, if I'm adding to a position long and you see this gray line way above the RSI, you're like, wow, you know, be careful, you know. So anyway, then down here, um, the last indicator off, this is the news down here that I would have, which won't be on on um, it won't come up on Active Trader, but I'll pop that up, that whole screen up, and I'm going to read about the stock I'm trading. Sometimes I'll detach it. You, know, you can detach these things. Um, uh, oh, no, not like that. Let me get it and let me maximize the cell. Yeah, so you can detach um, the whole setup here, you know, and then, you know, you, 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 any part of your setup you can detach. So if you just want to detach the news, if you have another screen, you know, you can you can do that. So I'm assuming you knew how to how to do that, but just in case you didn't um, go back. OK, so that's down there. So um, ADX. OK, this is one that I have uh, custom scripted, modified in myself. This is uh, um, I don't it doesn't come into play very often, but when it does, it's real important. And basically this mean line will call it a 25. When you see this gold line go above it, that means we're in a trend right now. We are actively in a trend. And if you were to guess what trend that, what guess would you make? <laughs> that is a downward trend. So that's why the red is above the green. So the, it, it's going to signify what type of trend it is by if, if which one of these is on top, green or red. Now, it's confusing. When I first started trading with people with this, they would just think, oh, green means up, red means down. You know, it's going. No, it's not that simple. And these lines cross. That's what this is showing you here. So remember, watch the gold. That's the first thing you should look at, or this yellow, depending on how your eyes work. But um, so this downtrend is getting stronger and stronger today. Even though these are going up, I'd be shorting. I'd absolutely be shorting. I'd be looking for this to get a higher position to short. This is this is a great time, unless this is about to retrace, which of course could happen, um, to get into a position and short and this just have a have a a, a number that you're like, okay, I got to get out. It's just it's obviously going up. You know, it's going too high. So if you if you want to ride a trend like that, uh, my advice would be, go in low share size so you can add to it, add to it, and you're still only down a. 100 or 200 or whatever your max is 500 you know depending on what your max loss is but then you know if it turns back around you have all these shares at a very high and then you're making big money and then hold out you know hold out and a lot of people unwind uh just parts of it just parts of it i i, I it changes your position and i just i don't like it i've done it both ways I just get out and I get back in. That's what I do. I get out and get back in. I've done them both, and there's big arguments with my team about that. I just recently started the Million Dollar Margin Club, which is people that have to have uh, $250,000 minimum in their account, and they can margin to a million dollars. And it's been very successful. I have, uh, I know I have at least one video out with that. Um, it's very exciting and very successful, and the share sizes are huge, and a lot of arguments have come in about unwinding your position. I don't know who's right. It, it, everybody trades differently, right? Everybody trades a different way. But what I do know is the strategy for the, the Million Dollar Margin Club, the FMC, uh, is um, – that it will work with any share size. And that's why I'm going to make a video about it, uh, 25 shares, 50 shares, whatever. You, if you've made the PDT, um, then you can, you can make money with the strategy that we developed and the scanner that we set up to find those particular stocks in the moment. Um, so far, it's been really successful. Now, it is, um, you know, it's not really for beginners, but when you start using 
when you get used to using a layout like this, you're not going to be a beginner for very long. You know, again, trade in a sim, use this in a sim for a couple of months and then and then keep track of, you know, on Trader View or on, you know, Word or Pad and Pencil, however you want to uh, do it. Keep track of your metrics. And then when you feel like you, you're green for a month or two and it's like working, then just move that over. Once you go to live trading, everything changes in your head. You know, there's that fear factor that suddenly you don't you don't trade the same way. It happens to all of us. And it can make a successful, um, you know, a successful sim trade into a terrible real um, trade uh, um, history. So keep that in mind that you got to get over that hump. And I recommend low share size to do that when you go live. I would I would cut my share size down to 25% of what I was trading in the sim and do that for a month or two, and and so that you don't blow your account because you or you might be the one. It never loses. I don't know. I've never met that person, <laughs> but, but I still still have, after years and years, still have huge epic losses because I just refuse to believe that I've made a, an error, you know. So anyway, this is this alarm will go off here, and there will be a phone sound that comes off unless you turn off the sound on your computer that the trend has developed or has changed. Um, so that's kind of cool to have that, you know, if you're, you're distracted. Uh, and I, I, I have a lot of pride in this one. I mean, obviously, this is not my invention. We all know this guy, the mathematician. But um, just the way using it on, on the, um, you know, the way I use it on scalping. I mean, I taught taught math myself for a few years, so uh, I'm kind of into this kind of stuff. But um, anyway, this this is the one minute setup that I use, and um, I have found it to work very very well. This tape's probably a little bit longer than I wanted to make this um, video. But I hope you uh, I hope you get a good use out of this. Please remember to subscribe and to give me a thumbs up. And good luck out there trading, guys. Um, I'll see you.